thank you for having me on uh, TEDx Talks. You know, I always imagined this would be a, a different setting than uh, what it is right now, but it, it is what it is. And I am really thankful and excited to be here with you guys. And I hope I can shed a bit of light on the topic that is really, uh, really close to my heart, which is uh, obesity and our efforts to combat obesity and inactivity. It's really two things uh, in Malaysia and around the world. And uh, today is not going to be about sad news. Uh, it's hopefully about uh, inspiring and empowering you as the audience uh, to play your own part in uh, addressing it for yourselves uh, and your very own communities, no matter how big or small they might be. Now, just to shed a small light or a big light on the topic of obesity, the next pandemic, uh, let me just share a few numbers that are going to be sounding quite alarming and the COVID pandemic. Uh, has not helped these stats by by any means. You know, since 2000, uh, since 1975, up until about 2020, uh, obesity has tripled uh, around the world globally, and uh, even in Malaysia itself. And I'm sure uh, most of you here are are from Malaysia. Uh, we are not the healthiest of countries. Malaysia is always neck to neck with Brunei as uh, the most obese country. Uh, in Asia, rank either number one or number two. And it's a fight that I've been fighting really for a long, long time. And uh, as Christy pointed out, uh, people call me Chigu Fitness uh, because we educate and empowering uh, individuals uh, on combating obesity for themselves. And I'm going to try and compress this into a 12 minute session to test your understanding uh, about weight management 101 because. The good news, yeah, in hindsight, the silver lining of it all, uh, compared to many, many global problems around this world, uh, obesity is something you can solve for diri sendiri or for yourself, but without proper understanding, it can be quite overwhelming, uh, can be quite stressful as well. So I want to really go back to the basics because you cannot control something that you do not understand. And I want to try and test uh, your understanding of just about maybe five, six, seven slides or so to see how much you guys know and please feel free to uh, try and answer these questions uh, within our little chat box uh, to see how everybody is coping so let me just quickly share the slides Give me one second oh, one minute da, da, da. share all right all right so i'm gonna ask some questions and uh, I, I know you see the word calories here, which is like, oh my God, Kevin's going to talk about calories. Now, let me just quickly reassure you is that you don't have to count calories every day, but we emphasize on understanding or knowing how to count calories. It's two different things. So don't be alarmed by the word calories because whether you like it or not, every diet that you go on or every exercise program that you pursue will somehow try and manage calories one way or another. So an understanding of how this work is really weight management 101. And for me, again, success in anything is about the fundamentals, not really about the, the funky stuff that you do. So question here, very simple. Weighs 80 kilos, uh, eats 2,000 calories. Yeah, burns 2,000 calories as well. What will his weight be tomorrow yeah will his weight be more same or less his weight will be the same yeah this should be quite quite straightforward so now in order for adam now to lose weight you can ask yourself again you have three choices if you are currently faced with uh, a weight management issue with again the COVID 19 situation has not helped even this you know this tech x talk uh, used to be an arena where we stand and we engage, but now we are sitting down and listening to a weight management session. So, yeah, again, in order for Adam to lose weight, he has three options. Option number one is eat less. Yeah, maybe a better diet. Option number B, exercise or move more. Or option number C, uh, which is do both exercise uh, and diet. And just for simplicity for today, Let's go with option number A, uh, which is just going to manage his diet a little bit. Yeah. So now let's now assume that Adam is now still weighs 80 kilos. Yeah. He eats 1,500 calories. 
Uh, he now burns uh, 2,000 calories. Yeah, so again, think about a car. You fill in gas, 1,500 calories worth, and then the car moves about 2,000 calories. So you think about a car again, if you're only filling in 1,500 calories, but the car is moving 2,000 calories, the car has to somehow make up the difference, which again is a lack of 500 calories. And the question then would be is, what will his weight be tomorrow? Yeah. And uh, think about this for a second and then try and answer the question in our chat. Will Adams's weight tomorrow be more, same, or less? And I'm giving you a few seconds to think about it. And I am assuming most of you probably will get this right as well, but it's going to now again, complicate the scenario a little bit further. What will his weight be tomorrow? And the answer is it has to be less because again, you're only filling in 1,500 calories. You are using up 2,000 calories. The body has to make up the the reduction of 500, the deficit of 500 to make up 2000 and your body will take this from your fat storage uh, in order for you to then hopefully lose weight. So now the golden question, which again, people around the world don't seem to quite wrap their head around. And I'm challenging you guys uh, here as well today, because everyone here, I am sure has experiences of managing managing the calories, dieting, and exercise. But this is the one question now that everybody sort of gets a little bit lost in. Yeah, the question uh, that we have now is, what will his weight be tomorrow? Again, 1,500 goes in, body takes fat, about 500, burns the 2,000. Yeah, his weight previously was 80 originally. But the golden question is, and try and answer this question in the chat box as well. What will his weight be tomorrow? Yeah, I'm just going to try and have a look a little bit in our chat to see. Yeah, this is where people tend to get a little bit, get a little bit lost. Yeah, what will his weight be tomorrow? What is 500 calories? And this is not where you have to count calories, but you have to understand calories in order for you to manage the, again, the input and the output. So now this answer will make you cry. And in every workshop, this is usually an eye opener for many participants. His weight tomorrow, yeah, let me go back here, is going to be 79.935 kilos. It's not a lot. Yeah, it's less by about 65 grams. This is why, ladies and gentlemen, weight loss takes time, but 500 calories is equivalent to about 65 grams. And how did we get this? And if this is the only thing, the only thing that you remember for, or from this session today, which is packed with lots of information, one kilo of body fat is more or less 7,700 calories. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter whether you're male or female. It doesn't matter whether you weigh 80 kilos or 180 kilos. 1,000 or one kilo is 7,700 calories. So 500 calories is just about 65 grams. It is not a lot, but this is why weight loss takes time. So if we apply this logic to, let's say, a bonus question for you guys and think about it again, we now know that one kilo is 7,700 calories, a lot more than what people usually think it is. How long would it take Adam to then lose 10 kilos if he has a deficit daily of just about 500 calories? And this is again, simple mathematics, but it is the weight loss management 101 for today. Yeah, so it will take him roughly about five months or 154 days. Why? Because 10 kilos times 7,700, divide that by 7,700, by 500 deficit calories per day uh, will give you about five months. So now when you think about it, five months, 10 kilos is great. But the world of social media tends to make you believe that's not quick enough because we always say people want to lose weight ASAP. They want to get rich ASAP. And they, they suck you into a, a pressure 
boiler, which makes you believe that you must lose weight in a short period of time, but that's not really how it works. Short period of time, weight manipulation is always water, but when it comes to fat and sustainable weight loss, you cannot run away from the one kilo is 7,700 calories. And uh, that really is, is my, my what's next push to you guys. Because once you do know now that one kilo is 7,700 calories and weight management takes time, what I would then implore you to do is A, try and look at your own lives to see whether you actually are part of the solution or part of the say not yet solution. Work with people who are in need because wanting to lose weight and knowing how to are two very different things. As much desire as you have, with the dieting and the exercise, if it does not quite work hand in hand with your actual needs, it can be a very frustrating journey. But if you look at the macronutrients and the general calorie requirements, the next question that you would have or should have are two questions. Number one, what is the actual amount of calories that I burn per day? Yeah, How do you know how far the car moves and how much fuel it actually burns? And number two is then how much fuel are you actually inserting into your vehicle so that the two numbers actually make sense. And again, you don't have to count the calories. It's really about perhaps doing it for a week or two, but after a week or two, you realize that you're eating rice every day, chicken every day and fish every day. Uh, that you generally get a, a gist of how everything fits together. But that is basically weight loss 101 for you. And my time is almost up. And uh, I would highly encourage you uh, to be part of a solution for a global pandemic, uh, which is obesity. Uh, again, in Malaysia, 50% uh, of adults are currently overweight uh, or obese. Uh, school children as well. Uh, we have an alarming rate of obesity among school children here in Malaysia, which is currently at about 18% overweight. If we do not help a younger generation to solve the problem as early on as possible, we will always deal with the firefighting uh, of helping uh, already, you know, grown up adults to try and solve a problem and a habit that they have been uh, living for perhaps 18 or so years. So the earlier you start in your life to sort of get back on track, uh, the easier it will be for us to overcome uh, the next pandemic of the world, which is one-on-one -on -one obesity among other things. And I know before I end, COVID-19 does not, does not help the situation. It makes the vehicle burn less fuel coupled with more stress, which you then fill in more fuel. But uh, again, to leave you on a positive note, uh, obesity is something that uh, you and only you can uh, solve for yourself. And I employ and encourage you to be part of the solution moving forward to help Malaysia reduce its ranks of obesity among the countries in Southeast Asia, Asia, and uh, globally as well. Yeah, with that, I thank you so much.